member of the Servite Order, but he has a gift of healing. Will you welcome, please, Father Peter Rookie? Very welcome. Now, please make yourself comfortable. Father Peter, can I ask you, first of all, about uh, this healing power? Is it your power, or, or what? What way does it work? No, I just pray. The jackasses pray, and I pray, and the Lord does it all. Uh, I was reminded of that in a, a scene in uh, Medjugorje several years ago when a deaf mute lady, 40 years of age, brought there by her parents from uh, Florida uh, after being blessed uh, went up the mountain and all of a sudden caught the attention of, their, of her parents and she uh, heard clearly the first time a donkey braying and the donkey was nowhere in sight she zeroed in on him in the bushes and gave him a big hug that was the first thing she heard with great clarity okay why do you think it this power is kind of manifest through you I mean people come to you and these cures happen when you are present well it's uh, it's the Lord has to come to us uh, Pat, uh, in a form uh, that can be seen, heard, smelled, uh, or touched. Uh, as but why you, Father Peter? Why you? Why you? Well, were you particularly pious? Uh, no, uh, the Lord ha doesn't have much choice. Before Him, we're all sinners. He chooses some of us sinners. Uh, through whom to work because as I say the scholastics used to say and it's very true St. Thomas Aquinas uh, there's nothing in our mind that doesn't first come through our senses and so to make himself present God has to take some uh, visible audible smellable form uh, touchable form to uh, come to us. He comes to us first through our parents. Uh, he could create immediately, but he doesn't. Yeah, he, but, but I mean, when th this happened to you, the first healing experience, how many years ago? Long time ago now. Yes, uh, before you were born, I'm afraid, Pat, uh, we came uh, here to Ireland <coughs> uh, to uh, Ben Burb, County Tyrone, in 1948 and uh, from the first uh, days we were there people came to be blessed and some returned and reported they were cured whatever it was and the first thing you know busloads of people were arriving we had to have the services outdoors and was it specifically you or was it your your brethren in well, the order as well well actually what I was doing and I continue to do is to bless the people with our saints. Now there are relics of our Servite saints, Saint Peregrine the Cancer Saint, whose feast was just this week, by the way, and <clears throat> Saint Philip Benizi, Saint Juliana, the seven founders of the seven right. Servites, and so on. Saint Anthony Pucci, whose life I, I, uh, I wrote. Okay, They're and do people them with their saint? Do people have saint. to believe? to be healed? Uh, <clears throat> I would say they have to have some kind of belief. Uh, I mean, Jesus said, thy, thy faith had made thee whole. Yes, correct. Uh, but uh, sometimes uh, God even gives us faith through a miracle. That happens also. Uh, <clears throat> I believe it happened in the case of David Parks, who had he told us had lost his faith uh, and uh, his health and, and well, and David as well. Is in, David's in the audience, so I he mean, is, David, David uh, there oh, you are. My goodness. I mean, most people that I know who know David would know him as a singer. That's right, Pat. But before that, you were a footballer. 
<laughs> Tell us the whole story then. Um, well, I was struck down with an illness, Pat, in 1977, uh, just at the height of my soccer career. And uh, How high was that now? Uh, how good were you, David? Well, played League of Ireland, uh, yeah. played against Pelé, won a cup medal with Bohemians. So That's pretty re good. Reasonably high, Pat. Okay. Yeah. And um, struggled for 12 years with an illness and uh, finally had two operations on Christmas Eve 1988 and on the 7th of January 1989 and the prospects were, were bad. And I was given uh, a week's holiday in Medjugorje, Anne and myself, by uh, people who organise a travel agency, Heather Parsons. And uh, I went out a non-believer, totally sceptic Pat, uh, didn't believe in, in these people who had healing powers and was persuaded by Anne to, to stand in line at one of Father, Healy, Father Peter's healing services. Uh, I was slain in the spirit and woke up with this intense heat passing through my body. And from that day to this, Pat, I haven't looked back. I'm, I'm, I'm what you see. Right, a perfect yeah. health. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And tell me this, you went to Medjugorje, but were you, you, you were sceptical going? Oh or? yeah, well I, I, I left, I'd left the church about uh, six years prior to 288. Uh, I went on a holiday path. The only reason I went was because Anne and I had spent a honeymoon in Yugoslavia. So it was a chance for a holiday, not for nothing spiritual. I wasn't interested in religion at all. Right. And now you are back Change. in the fold, is it? Back were? in the fold, yeah. Changed my life totally, Pat, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. totally. Heather, you mentioned uh, Heather Parsons That's there, right. David. Uh, Heather actually has written a book uh, called Man of Miracles. Uh, I believe you were swamped today when uh, you... I mean, Heather, I think, was signing the books, but people came to see you in Veritas. Well, I haven't had much to look at. <laughs> <laughs> no, I tell people, you know, uh, the first miracle I guess you could say I witnessed in, was in my own life when I was blinded and uh, as a young lad and my eyes were torn to, I won't say a worse word, but purgatory, I guess, if not worse. And uh, uh, the, uh, they came back, my sight came back uh, only by prayer. And uh, now when I uh, tell people I see okay, but I, I don't look too good. <laughs> my brother reminds me of that. He says, you see all right, but you don't look too good. Uh -huh. um, we have someone else in the audience, pa Patricia, Patricia McGee and uh, Patrick. Um, Patrick, now Patricia, when this happened to Patricia, she was probably too small to know what was going on. So yes. you maybe start the story. She was about two and a half months when we discovered that there was something wrong with her sight. And we went to her own local doctor. Then we went to the Royal in Belfast. We got everything tested and she was discharged from it and told she wouldn't see that she was blind. And at that time, I was heartbroken about it. And my father lived up in County Monaghan, and I went up and told him. He says, what are you talking about? There's a great man down, three miles down the road in Van Burb. <laughs> Get down and see him. I went home and told the wife, and we wrote that night. We put a self-addressed envelope into it. We wrote to Father Peter, and we got a reply in about four or five days. And we took hold to come on the Saturday week at two o'clock. We got a car and went to it at two o'clock. We couldn't get in a mile of it with people. They were everywhere. But we had this letter from Father Peter and we got right through. And he came out on the lawn and there was an experience I never saw because he put his two hands on her head and he says, your child will see. And I could see it through him at that time. He went transparent. It scared me. So we left. And went, we went out, got into the car, and started, we're about three miles down the road. There were, in an old car at that time, 41 years ago, there was a blind on the back window with a tassel. And the granny was in the car, and she had the child up, and she started on the tassel. And the guy said, oh my God, she can see. And that was it. There right. she is the day working a computer. Patricia, yeah, yeah, your sight is, is okay. I mean, you're wearing spectacles, but it's pretty a okay. Bit short, but, but no. Um, but, I'm just short-sighted, but apart from that, there's nothing wrong with she my doesn't computer. What impact does this have when you hear this story told? Because you can't remember anything of this at all. <laughs> um, I've, I've heard it told in my lifetime, but um, it's, it's hard to believe it, you know. 
Yeah, just a bit. But given that you are the subject of a miracle, you didn't think of joining the nuns or anything like that, right? <laughs> I don't think they'd have me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I want to go to, to, to <coughs> the mother and son here. Um, that's John, uh, Geraldine McElwain and Ryan. Now, Geraldine, tell me Ryan's story. Um, five years ago, Ram was diagnosed as having a brain tumour. And we went to the Royal and um, the doctor in the Royal told us that the type of tumour Ryan had was very rare and very little known about it, in fact, in the great Western world. So he, he um, decided to take Ryan in to perform some surgery and maybe some radiotherapy afterwards to see what it sort of removed the ugly cells that were left maybe after surgery. During um, Ryan's radiotherapy, an aunt of mine came round to the house that night and just like David, I really was a disbelieving Thomas over these sort of feeling things. And she suggested going down to Holy Cross Chapel to see Father Rookie. I couldn't even pronounce his name that night. I can remember sitting at the front going, Rookie, Rookie, trying to get it right. And that night, there was fr I had never been in the chapel before, and five priests came out onto the altar. And I can remember just looking up and just saying, that must be him, because there was just something so different about him. So he invited everyone up um, for the healing service, and me and Rand stood along just like everyone else. And Ran was very cold that night, and Ran had a hood up, and Father Rookie had been walking along and passed by us, and he stopped, and he looked at us and he said, and Reggie Donnelly at the time said to him, Father, no, this way, back to the, the start of the queue, and Father Rookie sort of pulled his arm away from him, and um, he said um, to me, who is sick? And I said, my son Ran, and he said, what's wrong? And I said, a brain tumour, and he began to pray. And I just can remember that night this tremendous feeling in my stomach, put in my stomach. And I began to cry and I couldn't stop the tears from coming out. I remember that night thinking, my God, if this man asked me anything, I'd just go to pieces here. I just couldn't speak. And he did. <laughs> and he said to me, has he a shunt in? And I said, I just looked up and I just, I said no. And he, the tears, my mother, I remember that night saying she'd never seen tears as big coming out of anyone's eyes. And he said, um, the beautiful tears of a mother. And at that stage, I just went to pieces. Mm -hmm. And after that, people had stopped us. And different churches around Belfast we went into and said, we, you know, was that you that night and, and your son, you know, through Father Okay. And afterwards then, um, Ran had a scan afterwards and the doctor at that time said that the tumour had shrunk severely. Um. And again, afterwards, they told us that um, Ran would be on special treatment till he was 14. And when they performed another scan, just I was up at the hospital three months ago and said he didn't need any more treatment. So he's completely cured? Uh -huh. All right. Um, Peggy, what about your story? Well, I had lost my voice for two and a half years. In what way? I mean, were you croaky or could you just not speak? A forced whisper. A forced whisper. Mm -hmm. And when I took a bad back, and a friend Sissy asked me to go to see Faruqi with a bad back in Swatra. And I said, all right, I was go, but I wasn't a bit fussed about going. So when I went, I was in a wheelchair when I went. And Sissy happened to say to Father Ricky that I had no voice and I hadn't it for two and a half years. So he asked me to kiss the crucifix and to say Jesus. And I whispered it. And he did the same again. I says, now say Mary. And I whispered it. And the third time he says to me, now say Jesus. And I said it. Perfect. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, were you a religious kind of person? No, I was. I didn't even want to go. <laughs> didn't even want to go that night. Because right. I, I had tried everything. <coughs> okay. Now, now, we've heard some stories here of people who are testifying to the fact that healing works, and it works through Father Peter Rookie. He's not claiming that he does it, but he is the instrument, of, if you like, to which it happens. Does anyone here have any kind of skepticism about this kind of cure? Yes, sir. Way over there. Good evening, Father Rookie. Uh, it's good to see you. No, what I was going to remind you of was in Medjugorje last year, you took a lady out of a wheelchair, which was in my section, I was helping out, and you told her to walk without the wheelchair, and she was scared. But you told her to walk without the wheelchair, and you took it away, and she walked half round the tent, which held about 400, and she didn't get back into it again until I left about an hour later. Okay, now that's another story, though, similar to now the ones she we've said heard. She was six years in the wheelchair. Okay, and she that's fair walk. enough. I'm just wondering, do people, does everyone here accept that these kind of cures do take place? 
I think we have, there isn't a skeptic among us. That's it, very interesting. There's normally an audience, will, there will be some Thomases in our audience. Uh, answer me this one before we conclude, um, Father Rookie. Why does it work for some people? I mean, you will have hundreds of people queuing up to see you. Some will be healed, some will not. How does it happen that some have to go away disappointed? Well, Paul, I believe it is, says, the Spirit breathes where he wills. Uh, he gives his gifts, and how can we ask, why does he give you this gift of being on this program, Pat, and having all this personality, and somebody else doesn't have much personality, let us say. Uh, it's uh, sometimes I can block, of course, my healing by, uh, well, the biggest block is unforgiveness and uh, hatred. Uh, there's a doctor, Bernie Siegel in Boston, for We've example. We've had Bernie Siegel on this program. Well, you did. Yeah. You know his line then, that hatred and unforgiveness can even cause yeah. serious illness. And he's a like wonderful cancer. man. He, can yes. actually, he helps people live after cancer far longer than the doctors say that they should. I quote him, uh, quite frequently in, uh, in the healing ministry. I hope I'm not uh, plagiarizing. I always give him credit, of right. course. But uh, he has a story, uh, which I'll tell very briefly, of the uh, Nazi concentration camp, uh, where a, <clears throat> a certain Jewish man was uh, caught going against the regulations and was uh, sentenced to a flogging. Jack Schwartz was his name, which means black. He had a black mark against him in uh, <clears throat> this concentration camp, which is Ein uh, uh, Schwetz. Uh, and uh, he was uh, taken his, from, his clothes were taken from him. He was attached to a post, and the flogging began. He fainted. and. During that fainting spell, Jesus came to him and said, you have to forgive your flogger. He came to, turned to this flogger and said those healing words. Ich liebe dich. I love, I you. love you. Right before his eyes, that flogger saw those wounds he had inflicted on Jack Schwartz Heal. Father Rookie, it's been very interesting meeting with you, mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of people will want to meet you again when you come back to Ireland to, mm -hmm. on your healing ministry. When is that? Well, we're hoping to come back in October sometime. It will be advertised, I'm sure. And, uh, okay, around October. Yes. I'm going to have to leave it there, but Father okay. Peter Rookie, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, thank, you. thank you. Just stay put for the moment. Okay. Now,